Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, find the difference. Okay, so in this question, we're given two strings, S and T, which consist of only lowercase letters. String T is generated by random shuffling string S and then added one more letter at some random position. Find the random letter that was added to string T. All right, so how do exactly do we solve this question? So there's several different ways that we can solve this question. Uh, one of the ways is to use a dictionary. Uh, we could go through the string S, then go through string T, uh, accordingly adding uh, letters to our dictionary, and then uh, using that in order to find out what the extra letter is. So that's one way to do it. Uh, a second way is to do it like how I did it. Uh, so what I did is I took each of the letters of T and put them inside of a list. And then after that, I iterated through all of the letters in S and then I removed whatever character we came across. So whatever letter we're at in S, I removed that. And think about the remove function over here. It only removes one instance of whatever it finds. So if we say remove A, it's only going to remove one instance of A. And that's why I'm using remove and not replace since replace replaces all of the instances of whatever you give it. And at the very ending, we're going to be left out with one letter and I'm just going to end up returning that. So that is one more valid solution, but both of the solutions are not actually very fast. So this is where we want to understand how can we use the XR operation to our advantage to get the fastest and most optimum solution. All right. So real quickly, let's just go over what the XR operation is. So over here, I have two binary uh, values. So one of 0011 and 0101. So if I perform the XOR operation on this, and in Python, it's represented using that. And uh, so one and one is going to end up giving me a value of zero. And zero and zero is also going to end up giving me a value of zero when I perform the XOR operation. But in both the other cases, so one and zero and zero and one, I get a value of one. So what do you actually notice over here? So when you have two values of the same thing, so if you have one and one and zero and zero, we end up getting a value of zero. So in other words, you can kind of think that when we have two of the same values, they're kind of negating each other. So let's now apply this uh, formula or idea to our uh, question over here. So over here, using this XOR function, there's one property that we need to understand in order to be able to solve our question in the fastest way. So this property is the fact that when, when we have two of the same numbers, so let's say we have a variable Y, and y x or y is going to give us a value of zero. So no matter when you x or two of the same values, we're going to end up getting zero. So similarly, like I showed you earlier, so when we had one and one or zero and zero, we ended up getting a value of zero when we x or those two values. So this property is really important for us. So now let's see how we can use it in our function, right? In our question, sorry. Okay, so let's say I have a variable a and b. And similarly for our T variable, right? So for the other string, I have A, B, and C. So the extra variable is obviously C. So how do we actually get hold of that? So in order to do that, we're going to XOR all of these together. So what's going to happen is we're going to do A, XOR B, XOR A, XOR B, XOR C. So now in this case, what's going to happen is, so when you do A, XOR A, so let's just rewrite this actually, just to make it easier. So this is the same as doing A, XOR A, and then XOR B, XOR B, and then XOR C. So what happens is A, XOR A ends up giving us a value of zero. So that equals to zero. And then uh, zero, then B, XOR B also ends up giving us a value of zero. So we have zero again. And then C is actually going to end up staying where it is. So we have zero, XOR zero, XOR C. And in order to simplify this furthermore, we have one more property. So if we have X, XOR zero, that is going to end up giving us a value of x. Keeping that in mind, this over here is the same as writing the value c. So as you can see, by XORing all of the values here, the duplicates are going to end up canceling and giving us a value of zero. So all the duplicates end up becoming zero, and we go we're going to end up with one last and final value, and that last value is going to correspond to whatever the extra letter is. And using that, we can end up finding out what that extra letter is. So now there's one last thing that we want to talk about is how we, can we convert a letter to a number? So to do that, we can use the ORD function in Python. So you do ORD and then you give it some sort of letter and it's going to give it the Unicode representation. In other words, each of the characters has 
or integer rep uh, representation for it. So that is what this is going to give us. So that is exactly how we're going to solve this question. Hopefully it does make sense. And now let's take a quick look at that. So let's remove this over here and let's call a function uh, or a variable called diff. And this is going to start off at a value of zero. And over here, we're going to go inside of a for loop and we're going to iterate through everything inside of s. So we can just do for character in s. So now we have everything in each of the things inside of s, we're going to perform the XOR operation on the diff variable here. But before we do that, we want to convert this value of the characters into its Unicode integer value. So to do that, we can do ORD care and we want to perform the XOR operation. So diff is going to be equal to diff XOR ORD care. And that is writing uh, this like this. It means the same thing. So by the ending of this, we're going to have taken the XOR of all of the characters inside of S. But now we want to do the same thing for everything in T. So let's just copy this over here and copy it. And one more thing, you could just directly over here do S plus T, but actually doing S plus T is slower than calling for two for loops. So over here, we're going to call a second for loop, but in this case, this is going to be for T and it's going to be the, and that's going to be it. So at the very ending of this, what's going to happen is the duplicates that we end up having are going to end up getting canceled, right? So duplicates are going to get canceled and we're going to be left out with zero X or of whatever the extra character is. And now we want to convert that integer value to an character. So to do that, we're just going to return it. So we're going to do care, C-H-A-R, or sorry, C-H-R. And uh, we're going to give it the value that we're on. And that value is just going to be the diff. And this is going to convert our integer value uh, to its uh, representative of the string or character, right? So at the ending of this, we end up getting the string. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.